Hi, I'm Jordan Gower, Titan Machinery here, and today we're going to go over the Case IH 3020 Terraflex. We got a uh, chain drive system here for the auger, tensioner right here. Obviously, this chain right here is getting pretty loose and war. When you run out of tension on the bottom of the tensioner, that chain normally is time to replace. Um, we got the same option here on the belt drive system for the sickle. The belt tensioner is right here uh, for your sickle drive belt. Uh, you always want to kind of check this belt for any cuts or fraying on the outside at the beginning of every season. Um, tension the uh, belt up to the tension guide right on the outside here. Uh, also on this left hand side of the head we ran two uh, height sensors right here. Uh, one for tilt and one for uh, up and down going through the field. On these height sensors we have a voltage that we like to see and normally the low side of that voltage is 0.7 volts the high side is 4.5. If you ever do have an issue with the calibration on them sensors it is normally one is out of range and uh, the sensor could all be bad or uh, the holes on the sensor are slotted so you can loosen the bolts and turn that sensor a little bit to get your correct voltage reading to go through your calibration. Pre-season stuff on this 3020 what a guy wants to look for is the guards and sections both on the edge of the guards make sure they don't have a rounded edge also any sections that are broke or chips missing out of them you want to replace pre-season. Uh, right behind that we have the auger that has inspection covers between every auger piece out to the end so if you ever do break a finger or need some auger repair it is very easy to get at. On the back side of that auger we do have two stripper plates one on the bottom one on the back that are fully adjustable so you can get the clearance you need to have that crop uh, flowing just like it should and nice to the center of the machine right into the feeder house. So on the real part of things uh, some some stuff to look for on this is they do have a replaceable plastic bushing right on the inside here just make sure you don't have a lot of up and down movement or you can, you'll be able to see that plastic getting wore on the inside. Once it starts getting wore and you get a lot of movement in here these are replaceable and it's time to replace. As we move to the right hand side of the machine we also have two fully adjustable height sensors over here one for the tilt and one for your header height going through the field. All ran off linkages down here on your float arm that goes. Um, auger part of things over here we have two brackets for auger adjustment uh, basically these four bolts right here and with this adjustment right here, you can move that auger up or down. With the adjustment back here, you can move that auger forward and back. Also in the center, we have a cam system right here that you can set the aggressiveness of the fingers in that auger on that cam. Just by loosening the four bolts right here and turning that cam one way or the other. Moving to the back side of the head, we run float arms that are run off of fully adjustable arms right here that run off a rubber torsion block. Um, basically you can adjust them for your ground conditions to get a nice clean cut going across the field. So to adjust these what you want to do is you can tighten this jam nut right here on, loosen it or tighten it and that's going to put either more or less pressure on that flex arm going underneath. Moving to the bottom side of the head, these previous uh, flex arms that I was talking about before with all your torsion blocks and everything. This is actually what puts the pressure on the ground. This thing is set in flex mode right now. If you do want to go to a rigid mode for cutting off the ground with wheat, you basically would have to suck this arm up, stick in your uh, pin to lock it up in rigid, and then it'll have that cutter bar perfectly straight for cutting off the ground and wheat applications. 